They're trying to see if Notre Dame could be a um, title contender. Um, Notre Dame looked really, really good against Texas. Um, Malik Zare came out. He didn't look. He didn't look all that confident in the beginning, but once he got it going, to me, dude looked really, really good. On you know, as far as being a college um, quarterback is concerned, and he made a mistake. I believe Texas made the mistake of thinking he was a run first, pass second quarterback, but. He proved that he had the arm that he could really let it loose. And um this guy's pretty good. Um so I say, you know you never know in college football, you just never know. Um I honestly didn't think Ohio State had a chance to win it all last year. So Notre Dame coming in ranked, what, number 11? I think they they may have what it take. They they may have what it take, but, it's you know, it's going to be rough. You know, um, Alabama looked, you know, really good against Wisconsin. Um they they you know Ohio State is still Ohio State um it's going to be a rough road i i would i would say Notre Dame has a chance to at least get into the playoffs i feel like they have a they have a they have a chance to at least get into the playoffs they're not going to the thing is they're not going to beat everyone the way they beat Texas and they need to know that um, sometimes a team will come off a big win like that and it messes with their psyche. And the next time around, um, the next time they have a, um, you know, a big opponent, big name, you know, big name school, that's an opponent. Um, and they're not able to do what they did against Texas. Can they? Stay focused. Can it, you know? To me, that's the big question. Is um, how how do they respond afterwards? You know, how do they respond afterwards? How how what do they? How do they come off a big victory like that? Now that they're in the spotlight, um. And Malik Zaire, Malik Zaire, I believe that's how you say his name. Now that he's um, in the limelight and he's the next big star or whatever, how do they handle that? That's the real big question. Um, Can he handle it? Can he handle it? They're already talking Heisman. (laughs) Week one, they're already talking Heisman. So that's going to follow him throughout the season. When you play for a big school like Notre Dame, you can expect that, and he's going to get that. People are going to, you know, they're going to look and say, hey, Heisman Trophy. <laughs> um, so, it's, you know, it's going to be interesting the rest of the way through. <sighs> Um, they beat Texas thirty-eight to three, meaning Texas could not score. How much of that is Notre Dame's defense, and how much is that is Texas offense? And I'm gonna have to lean towards it being Texas offense that didn't get the job done or couldn't get the job done and is quite incapable of getting the job done. Um, But that's not to take away from Notre Dame's defense. Um, That's not to say that they didn't, you know, you got to play who's in front of you. Um, Also, um, Notre Dame's running back, um, Turin, 
Tareen uh, Folston. Uh, he suffered a knee injury. Um, it was first said that it was his MCL. Then it comes back that it's his ACL. Um, and uh, anyway, they they continued to have a good uh, running game. Anyway, I believe it was CJ uh, Process. Can I say this guy's name? Okay, he got players on his team. I can't pronounce their names. Um, he carried the ball. Uh, 20 times, and he almost got a hundred yards. I think he got around 98 yards or so. Um, and Josh Adams picked up 49 yards. Whew. I mean, that's a beat down. When the backup running back comes in and, and and beats you down like that, that's a beat down. They they made Texas look like a JV team, and I'm and I'm gonna be honest. I was I'm trying not to just just smash on. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying not to just smash on Texas and just down talk them and talk bad about them. But oh my god, dude! Seriously, they got beat thirty-eight to three. But it, uh, it, it looked, or I should say, what was it? Um, it was thirty-eight to three, thirty-eight to three. But it was seemed like it was more like sixty-eight to three. You know, my goodness, man. Texas got to do something. I mean, they've they've got to improve quarterback play. Um, the quarterback didn't do anything. He couldn't. He couldn't. He, there was just nothing there for him the whole night, and he couldn't make anything happen. Um, and you know, Texas isn't going to put up with that. Um, so Charlie Strong, you better figure it out. Um, but this could be a a, a really special year for Notre Dame. Um, and the reason being is that I always believe in I always believe in head coaches like um, Brian Kelly coming in there, um, coming in, coming in. What is this? His third year, third, fourth year. That's you know that's about right. That's about the right timing for him to finally have his team put together. And instill his type of play, his type of di- uh, his type of uh, discipline. Okay, you you give a coach like him about three three to four years, and they usually have established uh, what they want. They usually have the team that they want and the right players, and you get all those uh, juniors and seniors that spilled over from the last regime out of there, like Everett Colson, he's gone. Um, and you, you bring in Malik Zaire, and look. Look what he's able to do. And he looked way better. He, he really looked way better than, Everett, than I've ever seen Colson look. So, um, but I, I believe that Notre Dame could be a surprise. They're a team that you got to watch this year. I'm not going to pick them to jump into the top four or top five as a, I don't pick them like as a guarantee, but they're a team you better keep your eyes on. And I'm, I'm saying that because of, to be honest, they're a team that could be better than what you think they are. They, they could actually be one of the top teams, and it could be a sleeper as far as who who deserves to be in the top five. They're already um, top 20, you know, going in their top 10. But as far as, like, the elite of the elite, you got to watch them because they could actually slip into that, um, slip into that top five or – what is it? The the top four that's needed to um to get into the playoff hunt. So that's 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 pretty much it for them. I expect them to have a really good season. Um, and I I, I expect for um Malik Zahir to have a really good season. What is he a sophomore? Um, 
Yeah, he's you know he's just it's right you know after coming off of that what is it the Music City Bowl against LSU, his his confidence is there. Um, the team's confidence is there. If this is that time. This is you know like I said, it, that old regime is not there anymore. This is Brian Kelly's team, and their team. You better be keeping your eyes on, or they can surprise you. You know. Um, that could be the Ohio State of 2015. So, so Notre, so Notre Dame football has returned. They're back to being, um, you know, a powerhouse, a true powerhouse, and not like that team that they had back in what was it, 2012. When they had Takeo, uh, what's his name? What was the guy named that got caught with the fake girlfriend? We don't even remember. I don't even remember his name anymore. He played. He played with the Chargers. <laughs> anyway, wow, how times have changed. <laughs> I went to say his name. I don't even remember it anymore. I mean, I'm not trying to be funny. It's just you know, wow. Look at how things have changed. But anyway, um, that team, that Notre Dame team that got stomped out by Alabama in the, in the uh, national championship, they were nowhere prepared for Alabama. They they didn't they, – uh, Notre Dame really didn't belong there that year. Um, they were there, and it just – they just they, – they didn't match up well. This team, in my opinion, looks better than that team. Um, again, we're just in week one, so let's not get ahead of ourselves, but, um, I think that this team is a lot tougher, um, a lot scrappier, and I look for them to have a pretty good year, but that's just my opinion.